The Douglas A-1 Skyrider was an American single-seat attack aircraft that saw service between the late 1940s and early 1980s. The Skyrider had a remarkably long and successful career. It became a piston-powered, propeller-driven anachronism in the jet age and was nicknamed SPAD after the French World War I fighter. It was operated by the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps and the United States Air Force, and also saw service with the British Royal Navy, the French Air Force, the Air Force of the Republic of Vietnam, and others. In U.S. service, it was finally replaced by the LTV A-7 Corsair II swept-wing subsonic jet in the early 1970s. Design and Development The piston-engined Skyrider was designed during World War II to meet United States Navy requirements for a carrier-based, single-seat, long-range, high-performance dive torpedo bomber to follow on from earlier types such as the Helldiver and Avenger. Designed by Ed Heinemann of the Douglas Aircraft Company, prototypes were ordered on 6 July 1944 as the XBT-2D-1. The XBT-2D-1 made its first flight on 18 March 1945 and in April 1945, the USN began evaluation of the aircraft at the Naval Air Test Center. In December 1946, after a designation change to AD-1, delivery of the first production aircraft to a fleet squadron was made to VA-19A. The AD-1 was built at Douglas or El Segundo plant in Southern California. In his memoir The Lonely Sky, test pilot Bill Bridgman quotes a production rate of two aircraft per day, describing the routine yet sometimes hazardous work of certifying AD-1S fresh off the assembly line for delivery to the U.S. Navy in 1949 and 1950. The low-wing monoplane design started with a Wright R3350 radial engine, later upgraded several times. Its distinctive feature was large straight wings with seven hard points apiece. These gave the aircraft excellent low-speed maneuverability, and enabled it to carry a large amount of ordnance over a considerable combat radius and loiter time for its size, comparable to much heavier subsonic or supersonic jets. The aircraft was optimized for the ground attack mission and was armored against ground fire in key locations unlike faster fighters adapted to carry bombs, such as the Vought F-4U Corsair or North American P-51 Mustang, which would be retired by U.S. forces before the 1960s, shortly after Heinemann began design of the XBT-2D-1. A study was issued that showed for every 100 pounds of weight reduction the takeoff run was decreased by 8 feet, the combat radius increased by 22 miles and the rate of climb increased by 18 feet per minute. Heinemann immediately had his design engineers begin a program for finding weight saving on the XBT-2D1 design, no matter how small. Simplifying the fuel system resulted in a reduction of 270 pounds, 200 pounds by eliminating an internal bomb bay and hanging the bombs, drop tanks and rockets from the wings or fuselage, 70 pounds by using a fuselage dive brake, and 100 pounds by using an older tailwheel design. In the end, Heinemann and his design engineers found over 1,800 pounds of weight savings on the original XBT-2D1 design. The Navy AD series was initially painted in Anna 623 glossy sea blue, but during the 1950s following the Korean War, the color scheme was changed to light gold gray and white. Initially using the gray and white navy pattern, by 1967 the USAF began to paint its Skyriders in a camouflaged pattern using two shades of green, and one of tan. Used by the USN over Korea and Vietnam, the A-1 was a primary close-air support aircraft for the USAF and VNAF during the Vietnam War. The A-1 was famous for being able to take hits and keep flying. There was added armor plating around the cockpit area for added pilot protection. 
It was replaced beginning in the mid-1960s by the Grumman A6 Intruder as the Navy's primary medium attack plane in supercarrier-based air wings. However, Skyriders continued to operate from the smaller Essex-class carriers. The Skyrider went through seven versions, starting with the AD-1, then AD-2 and AD-3 with various minor improvements. Then the AD-4 with a more powerful R335026WA engine. The AD-5 was significantly widened, allowing two crew to sit side by side. It also came in a four-seat night attack version, the AD-5N. For service in Vietnam, USAF Skyriders were fitted with the Stanley Yankee extraction system, which acted similarly to an ejection seat, though with a twin rocket pulling the escaping pilot from the cockpit. In addition to serving during Korea and Vietnam as an attack aircraft, the Skyrider was modified into a carrier-based airborne early warning aircraft replacing the Grumman TBM-3W Avenger. It served in this function in the USN and Royal Navy, being replaced by the Grumman E-1 Tracer and Fairy Gannett respectively in those services. Skyrider production ended in 1957 with a total of 3,180 built. In 1962, the existing Skyriders were redesignated A1D through A1J and later used by both the USAF and the Navy in the Vietnam War. Operational History Korean War Though the Skyrider was produced too late to take part in World War II, it became the backbone of United States Navy aircraft carrier and United States Marine Corps strike aircraft sorties in the Korean War, with the first ADs going into action from Valley Forge with VA-55 on 3 July 1950. Its weapons load and 10-hour flying time far surpassed the jets that were available at the time. On 2 May 1951, Skyriders made the only aerial torpedo attack of the war, hitting the Hwakion Dam, then controlled by North Korea. On 16 June 1953, a USMC AD-4 from VMC-1 piloted by Major George H. Linnemeyer and CWO Vernon S. Kramer shot down a Soviet-built Polokarpov Po-2 biplane, the only documented Skyrider air victory of the war. AD-3N and 4N aircraft carrying bombs and flares flew night attack sorties, and radar-equipped ADs carried out radar jamming missions from carriers and land bases. During the Korean War, AD Skyriders were flown only by the U.S., Navy and U.S. Marine Corps, and were normally painted in dark navy blue. It was called the Blue Plane by enemy troops. A total of 128 Navy and Marine AD Skyriders were lost in the Korean War 101 in combat and 27 to operational causes. Most operational losses were due to the tremendous power of the AD. ADs that were waved off during carrier recovery operations were prone to perform a fatal torque roll into the sea or the deck of the aircraft carrier if the pilot mistakenly gave the AD too much throttle. The torque of the engine was so great that it would cause the aircraft to rotate about the propeller and slam into the ground or the carrier. Cathay Pacific via Hayu incident on 26 July 1954 Two Douglas Skyriders from the aircraft carriers US Philippine Sea and Hornet shot down two Chinese People's Liberation Army Air Force LAR 11s off the coast of Hainan Island while searching for survivors after the shooting down of a Cathay Pacific Skymaster airliner three days previously by LA-9S. Vietnam War As American involvement in the Vietnam War began, the A-1 Skyrider was still the medium attack aircraft in many carrier air wings, although it was planned to be replaced by the A-6A Intruder as part of the general switch to jet aircraft. Skyriders from Constellation and Ticonderoga participated in the first U.S. Navy strikes against North Vietnam on 5 August 1964 as part of Operation Pierce Arrow in response to the Gulf of Tonkin incident. 
striking against fuel depots at Vin, with one Skyrider from Ticonderoga damaged by anti-aircraft fire, and a second from Constellation shot down, killing its pilot. During the war, U.S. Navy Skyriders shot down two North Vietnamese Air Force Miko Yangurovich MiG-17 jet fighters. One on the 20th of June 1965, a victory shared by Lieutenant Clinton B. Johnson and Lieutenant Junior Grade Charles W. Hartman III of EA-25, and one on the 9th of October 1966 by LTJG William T. Patton of EA-176. Using their cannons, this was the first gun kill her Vietnam. While on his very first mission, Navy pilot LTJG Dieter Dengler took damage to his A-1H over Vietnam on 1 February 1966, and crash-landed in Laos. As they were released from U.S. Navy service, Skyriders were introduced into the South Vietnamese Air Force. They were also used by the USAF to perform one of the Skyrider's most famous roles, the Sandy Helicopter Escort on Combat Rescues. USAF Major Bernard F. Fisher piloted an A-1E on 10 March 1966 mission for which he was awarded the Medal of Honor for rescuing Major Jump Myers at Ashore Special Forces Camp. USAF Colonel William A. Jones, three piloted an A-1H on the 1st of September 1968 mission for which he was awarded the Medal of Honor. In that mission, despite damage to his aircraft and suffering serious burns, he returned to his base and reported the position of a downed U.S. Airman. After November 1972, all A-1S in U.S. Service in Southeast Asia were transferred to the South Vietnamese Air Force and their roles taken over by the subsonic LTVA-7 Corsair II. The Skyrider in Vietnam pioneered the concept of tough, survivable aircraft with long loiter times and large ordnance loads. The USAF lost 201 Skyriders to all causes in Southeast Asia, while the Navy lost 65 to all causes. Of the 266 lost A1S, five were shot down by surface-to-air missiles, and three were shot down in air-to-air -air combat, two by North Vietnamese MiG-17s. On the night of 29 August 1964, the first A1E Skyrider was shot down and the pilot killed near Bian Ho Air, Air Base. It was flown by Captain Richard D. Goss from the 1st Air Commando Squadron, 34th Tactical Group. The second A1 was shot down on 29 April 1966, and the third A1 pilot captain. Grant N. Tabor was lost on 19 April 1967, both were from the 602 Air Commando Squadron. The 4th A-1 Skyrider was from Navy Squadron VA-25 flying a ferry flight from Cuba Point to Coral Sea and was lost to two Chinese MiG-17 on 14 February 1968. Lieutenant Joseph P. Dunn, USN, had flown too close to the Chinese-held island of Hainan, and had been intercepted. Lieutenant Dunn's A-1H Skyrider 134,499 was the last U.S. Navy A-1 lost in the war. He was observed to survive the ejection and deploy his RAF, but was never found. Initially listed as Mia, he is now listed as Kia and posthumously promoted to the rank of commander. Shortly thereafter, A-1 Skyrider Naval Squadron UNS transitioned to the A-6 Intruder, A-7 Corsair II or Douglas A-4 Skyhawk. In contrast to the Korean War, fought a decade earlier, the U.S. Air Force used the naval A-1 Skyrider for the first time in Vietnam. As the Vietnam War progressed, USAF A-1S were painted in camouflage while USN A-1 Skyriders were gray, white in color, again. In contrast to the Korean War, when A-1S were painted dark blue, in October 1965, to highlight the dropping of the six millionth pound of ordnance, Commander Clarence J. Stoddard of Attack Squadron 25, flying an A-1H, dropped a special
special, one-time only object in addition to his other munitions, a toilet. South Vietnamese Air Force The A-1 Skyrider was the close air support workhorse of the South Vietnamese Air Force for much of the Vietnam War. The U.S. Navy began to transfer some of its Skyriders to the VNAF in September 1960, replacing the VNAF Solder Grumman F-8F Bearcats. By 1962 the VNAF had 22 of the aircraft in its inventory, and by 1968 an additional 131 aircraft had been received. Initially Navy aviators and crews were responsible for training their South Vietnamese counterparts on the aircraft, but over time responsibility was gradually transferred to the USAF. The initial trainees were selected from among VNAF Bearcat pilots who had accumulated 800 to 1200 hours flying time. They were trained at NAS Corpus Christi, Texas, and then sent to NAS Lemoore, California for further training. Navy pilots and crews in Vietnam checked out the Skyriders that were being transferred to the VNAF and conducted courses for VNAF ground crews. Over the course of the war, the VNAF acquired a total of 308 Skyriders, and was operating six A-1 squadrons by the end of 1965. These were reduced during the period of Vietnamization from 1968 to 1972, as the U.S. began to supply the South Vietnamese with more modern close air support aircraft such as the Cessna A-37 and Northrop F-5 and at the beginning of 1968, only three of its squadrons were flying A-1S. As the U.S. ended its direct involvement in the war, it transferred the remainder of its Skyriders to the South Vietnamese, and by 1973, all remaining Skyriders in U.S. inventories had been turned over to the VNAF. Unlike their American counterparts, whose combat tours were generally limited to 12 months, Individual South Vietnamese Skyrider pilots ran up many thousands of combat hours in the A-1, and many senior VNAF pilots were extremely skilled in the operation of the aircraft. United Kingdom The Royal Navy acquired 50 AD-4W early warning aircraft in 1951 through the Military Assistance Program. All Skyrider AEW-1S were operated by 849 Naval Air Squadron, which provided four plane detachments for the British carriers. One flight aboard HMS Bulwark took part in the Suez Crisis in 1956. 778 Naval Air Squadron was responsible for the training of the Skyrider crews at RNAS Caldros. In 1960, the Ferry Gannett AEW-3 replaced the Skyriders, using the APS-20 radar of the Douglas aircraft. The last British Skyriders were retired in 1962. In the late 1960s, the APS-20 radars from the Skyriders were installed in Avro Shackleton AEW-2S of the Royal Air Force which were finally retired in 1991. Sweden 14 British AEW-1 Skyriders were sold to Sweden to be used by Svensk Flygenstab between 1962 and 1976. All military equipment was removed and the aircraft were used as target tugs with the Swedish armed forces. France The French Air Force bought 20 XUSNAD 4S as well as 88 XUSNAD 4Ns and 5 XUSNAD 4 NARS with the former three-seaters modified as single-seat aircraft with removal of the radar equipment and the two operator stations from the rear fuselage. The AD-4N NARS were initially acquired in 1956 to replace aging Republic P-47 Thunderbolts in Algeria. The Skyriders were first ordered in 1956 and the first was handed over to the French Air Force on 6 February 1958 after being overhauled and fitted with some French equipment by Sud Aviation. The aircraft were used until the end of the Algerian War. 
The aircraft were used by the 20E Escada de Chasse and EC-21 in the close air support role armed with rockets, bombs and napalm. The Skyriders had only a short career in Algeria, but they nonetheless proved to be the most successful of all the ad hoc coin aircraft deployed by the French. The Skyrider remained in limited French service until the 1970s. They were heavily involved in the civil war in Chad, at first with the ARM EQT de Air, and later with a nominally independent Chadian Air Force staffed by French mercenaries. The aircraft also operated under the French flag in Djibouti and on the island of Madagascar. When France at last relinquished the Skyride as it passed the survivors on to client states, including Gabon, Chad, Cambodia and the Central African Republic. The French frequently used the aft station to carry maintenance personnel, spare parts and supplies to forward bases. In Chad they even used the aft station for a bombardier and his special stores, empty beer bottles, as these were considered as non-lethal weapons, thus not breaking the government-imposed rules of engagement during operations against Libyan-supported rebels in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Variants XBT-2D1 single-seat dive bomber torpedo bomber prototype for the U.S. Navy XBT-2D1 and three-seat night attack prototypes, only three aircraft built XBT-2D1P photographic reconnaissance prototype, only one built XBT-2D1Q2 seat electronics countermeasures prototype, one aircraft only BT-2D2 upgraded attack aircraft, one prototype only. AD-1 the first production model, 242 built. AD-1 Q2 seat electronic countermeasures version of the AD-1, 35 built. AD-1 UAD-1 with radar countermeasures and tow target equipment, no armament and no water injection equipment. XAD-1 W-3 seat airborne early warning prototype, AD-3 W prototype, one aircraft only, AD-2 improved model, powered by 2,700 horsepower right R-335026 W engine, 156 built. AD-2D unofficial designation for AD-2S used as remote control aircraft to collect and gather radioactive material in the air after nuclear tests. AD-2Q2 seat electronics countermeasures version of the AD-2-21 built. AD-2Q UAD-2 with radar countermeasures and target towing equipment, no armament and no water injection equipment, one aircraft only. XAD-2 similar to XBT-2D-1 except engine, increased fuel capacity. AD-3 proposed turboprop version, initial designation of A-2D Sky Shark. AD-3 stronger fuselage, improved landing gear, new canopy design, 125 built. AD-3S anti-submarine warfare model, only two prototypes were built. AD-3N three-seat night attack version, 15 built. AD-3Q electronics countermeasures version, countermeasures equipment relocated for better crew comfort, 23 built. AD-3Q target towing aircraft but most were delivered as the AD-3Q. AD-3W airborne early warning version, 31 built. XAD3EAD3W modified for ASW with Aeroproducts propeller AD4 strengthened landing gear, improved radar, G2 compass, anti-G suit provisions, 420mm cannon and 14 aero rocket launchers, capable of carrying up to 50 pounds of bombs, 372 built. AD-4B specialized version designed to carry nuclear weapons, also armed with 420mm cannon, 165 built plus 28 conversions. AD-4L equipped for winter operations in Korea, 63 conversions. AD-4N 3-seat night attack version, 307 built.
AD-4NA designation of 100 AD to 4 ends without their night attack equipment, but fitted with 420mm cannon, for service in Korea as ground attack aircraft. AD-4NL version of the AD-4N, 36 conversions. AD-4Q2Z electronic countermeasures version of the AD-4, 39 built. AD-4W3 seat airborne early warning version, 168 built. A total of 50 AD-4Ws were transferred to the Royal Navy as Skyrider AEWMK-1. AD-5 side-by-side -side seating for pilot and co-pilot, without dive brakes, 212 built. AD-5N4 seat night attack version, with radar countermeasures, 239 built. AD-5Q4 seat electronics countermeasures version, 54 conversions. AD-5S1 prototype to test magnetic anomaly detector anti-submarine equipment. AD-5W3 seat airborne early warning version with an APS-20 radar installed, 218 were built. UA-1E utility version of the AD-5, AD-6 single-seat attack aircraft with three dive brakes, centerline station stressed for 3,500 pounds of ordnance, 30 in in diameter, combination 14 30ths in bomb ejector and low, high altitude bomb director, 713 built. AD-7 The final production model, powered by a R335026WB engine, with structural improvements to increase wing fatigue life, 72 built.